In last week's video, I showed you the operating system install, which was 64-bit bookworm desktop. And in this week's video, I'm going to show you the Whisper install on the Pi 5, compare the various models and their performance using the GNOME system monitor, and also compare it to the Raspberry Pi performance. You're going to see that the Pi 5 can handle up to the small Whisper model, while the Pi 4 can only really do the tiny model. Here's the boot screen. I really like System Monitor, GNOME System Monitor, because it shows you each CPU and how it's performing. So I'll send the link in the description here. But uh, yeah, I really like that, so I'm installing that. I just copy and paste these lines here, sudo apt-get update, and then the uh, install line here. Post, paste those into the command line. It takes a couple minutes. To install Whisper, I'm going to this link above here, and then copying these lines. I'm going to change directory into the desktop and install there. Before you compile the stream file, make sure you copy this link over to your terminal and install that and then compile because otherwise you're going to get a compiling error here. To download the models, you just copy this line to your terminal and then um, if you want to download the base, just replace the end here. The tiny e.en with base.en or the small is small.en. All right, everything should be set up. Here's the USB microphone. I'll put the link in the description. You can probably use any USB microphone. To run it, copy this. We're going to run the tiny model. All right, let's run it. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was quick. That really, uh, that went a lot quicker than the, whoa, okay. The processing is way uh, better than the Pi. I can tell. Okay, it had a couple skips there. We're using the tiny model. See it repeated here? There's a huge difference here in using Whisper um, on the Pi 5. It runs much better than on the uh, Pi 4. Alright, let's try running the base model. Replace tiny here with base. Let's run it. Here we go. What do we got here on the base model? I mean, that initial processing step from the time I hit enter for it to run, it's much quicker uh, than the Pi 4. I'll tell you that much. Transcription is pretty good. I notice in regard to the models, the bigger the model, for example, when you get to base, there's less repetition. So in the in the last run on the tiny model, you saw some repetition, but there's less repetition when you use a bigger model. But it's harder to run a bigger model. Um, so on the Pi Five, it's running much better. Um, we have the base model running now and here's what we have way better than the Pi 4 alright let's try the small model and see what happens small model let's give it a go okay all right, it's actually doing okay. These peaks here throttling to about 100% and then coming back down to zero. This is what the Pi 4 does with pretty much the tiny model. Um, so what a huge difference in processing. I mean, this is uh, pretty incredible that this is able to run the 
small model. I didn't think it would really be able to do it that well, but it's uh, not saturating. The processors aren't, aren't like saturating up here. Uh, well, here it did a little bit. But uh, on the Pi 4, if we were to try this, no way. This would not have worked at all. All right, I'm going to quantize the small model to 8 bits. I already copied this over to the terminal, compiled that. Now I'm going to copy this line and replace the 5s with 8s because I'm going to quantize to 8 bits. And I'm going to replace the base with small. Let's go. Now let's run that new quantized 8-bit small model and we'll see what we get. All right. And here is the GNOME system monitor. And we're doing okay. Doing okay. Let's try the 4-bit edition of the small model. All right, let's try the quantized 4-bit small model. Let's see what happens here. Are we going to get similar peaks to before? The CPU and memory used by the small model, it's about the same for the small, the quantized 8-bit small and the quantized 4-bit small. I I was a little surprised, but that's what I'm seeing. There was a big difference, though, between the small, tiny, and base models. Those all ran differently. So the tiny only got up to about 40% of CPU usage and then went back down towards zero. The base went up to 60, and then the small went up to 100%. So big differences between the different models. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to try this, is see if the card in here, the SD card, which is running the 64-bit bookworm operating system, I'm going to take that out after I shut down the computer, put it in here into the Pi 4. I want to see if it's backwards compatible. I know some things with the Pi 5 are not backwards compatible, such as the GPIO usage. It's different because of this RP1 chip, but I wonder if uh, things in general will be backwards compatible. I know, because I tested it in last week's video, that the Pi 4's, um, the Bullseye 64-bit operating system isn't forward compatible with the Pi 5, so let's see if Bookworm is backwards compatible. Well, what do you know, I took the SD card out and it booted up on the Pi 4. That's pretty cool. Bookworm 64-bit desktop is compatible with the Pi 4 and the Pi 5. That's good to know. So now I'm going to do similar tests to before. Open up the GNOME system monitor tool. And then I'm going to run Whisper. So I'm going to uh, shut down, put in the old bullseye operating system and compare on the gnome system all right we're on the pi 4 the tiny model is running same parameters as last time and you can see here with the tiny model at first it throttles all the way up to a hundred for like 10 seconds and then winds down then it throttles up then winds down and this is with the tiny model so this is about what you can expect to see with the Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to the base model. Here the only thing that changed was tiny to base right here. Okay. And here we go. This is saturated up to 100. And it's not really coming down much. And finally, we're going to run the small model. 
Let's give it a shot. Here we go. Running the small model. And you can see here that we pretty well saturate the processor, all processors. And we're not getting any output. Well, thank you for watching and happy programming, everybody.